Hello and welcome to another video. I'm Tasman and today I will be attempting to make an Elizabethan ruff. Apart from Elizabethan ruffs being... It's the latest fashion actually and as a matter of fact it makes me look rather sexy. They were a popular fashion accessory worn by the rich in the mid 16th and 17th centuries. Both men and women would wear this starched frilly collar, commonly white, in a colour or shaded with vegetable dyes. Originally, they were worn as an interchangeable cloth to keep their outfits clean, but over time that increased in size and flamboyancy, becoming a symbol of aristocracy and wealth, partly down to the expense of the materials used which were linens and laces, but also due to the upkeep and impracticality of them. Because the ruff had to be starched and cleaned regularly to keep its shape and brightness, that showed that you were indeed wealthy enough to get them laundered and set with starch every day. And their impracticality and forced posture displayed to others that you most definitely had people to do things for you. They also ended up framing the face pretty well in portraits, I must say. But pets I feel missed out on this iconic fashion trend, so I'm going to make one for my dog. This is my dog Bugsy, he's a gentleman who likes to steal socks and sniff butts, and to start this project I first had to measure this chunky boy's neck. Right, so I'm gonna say, oh my gosh, 19 inches, that's a fat neck, that's a fat neck, 19 inches, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're crazy. Stop. You're crazy, yeah? Stop it! <laughs> I'm so excited. You know you're gonna get a rough. You're gonna, you're gonna get a rough. It has to be from rough. You crazy boy. It's crazy. You crazy boy? You're crazy? Where is So, after his speedy tailoring session, it was time to get started on this rough. So, I decided to use the cheapest material. Um, this is like a white muslin, uh, used for sort of pattern making, really really cheap and quite stiff as well, so it was quite good for this project. So the first thing it to do was to make extremely long strips of fabric. Depending on how wide you want the ruff to stick out from your neck, this is the measurement you want to do. So in this instance I decided to do 5 inches wide strips and I would then be folding that in half to make 2.5 inches and that's the length that will be sticking out from your neck so it will be coming out 2.5 inches around the circumference of your neck and you can adjust this to any thickness that or width that you want. Um, in order to do this I just measured dots uh, 5 inches wide all the way down long strips of fabric and just kept doing that until I had enough to start with. It's going to be hard to judge how much you need for this project, but you'll be able to get an idea once you start folding them up. But just make as long pieces as you can at the time. So yeah, once you cut some really, really long strips, basically bandages really, um, you want to fold it in half um, to make it slightly thicker. Then you want to hem both edges. Now in this video I didn't hem this raw edge but I wish I had done so I would do that as well. I would recommend using either invisible thread or cotton thread. I was also watching a woodworking puppetry class which is kind of funny. Um, so yeah just sew those two sides all along the length just a straight stitch. Um, really really simple. So a good rule of thumb to guess how much length you're going to need. Measure your neckband and for every one inch you would want approximately 12 inches of ruffle. Um, my neckband was 20 inches, I don't know how much I did, I think maybe possibly 200 inches length of fabric, but if you're not sure how long to do the strips just make them as long as you can and it's better to do them long than shorter because then you won't have to join so many pieces together. So that's how close I did the hem on both sides and this is a little bit of how we're going to be folding them a little bit later. So now you have uh, two pieces that you need to connect together to make this extra extra long piece of uh, fabric. You want to do it so that you're kind of 
You don't want to overlap because it will create a chunky edge. I mean, you can do if you want, if you're not bothered about it, but I decided to kind of go, um, uh, you'll see it in a minute. It's kind of hard to describe, but kind of going in and seamlessly kind of taking fabric from one edge and to another edge. Um, okay, I didn't film the end shot of this, but it's a bit like, imagine if you were sewing together a wound. <laughs> and you're kind of just sort of pinching the fabric together just so it touches together but not overlaps you get what I mean a bit like a zigzag stitch or you could also just use fusible tape or even glue it if you wanted to with fabric glue okay so once you've got your desired length of fabric you want to start making the ruffles now I measured the width of the lengths I have here and that's the measurement of ruffle that you want, the thickness of ruffle that you want. So along the raw edge of the hem here, I marked measurements of 2.5 inches all the way down the fabric lines as marker points for where we're going to be sewing. Um, you want to sew with a, the same colour thread, invisible thread I used, or just a simple strong cotton white thread for this. Also, when you are making the dot measurements all down the length of your fabric, make sure to do it on the side that is going to be hidden by the neckband so that the pencil marks don't show up on the outer side of the rough because this is a mistake I made the first time and then I realised and on the finished product I have little dot marks which you don't want to see. So make sure you do it on the side that's going to be covered by the neckband eventually. You want to take the very edge of your length, which has the first marker on it, and fold it, join it to the third marker, so that in the middle of the fold, where the bend of the fabric is, you will also have the second marker. So you get your first one and join it to the third one, and that will create the fold that you're looking for. And then you just repeat that. Uh, for all the increments of inches that you've marked in. Like you sew into the first marker, miss a marker, and then sew into the next marker. So you can see here, this was the last marker that I folded in, and then when I fold it, the other middle marker is kind of in the center piece, and it will create this fold. Um, for the first couple of folds, you can also pin it in place just to make sure that it works. So for example here, um, you can see how I've uh, sewn the thread through and keep missing one, keep missing one, and it creates this kind of um, arced um, fold. It's kind of hard to explain here, but when you do it in person, um, you'll be able to get it. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's basically just join from one, join to the third and it creates this ruched effect. Also when you're doing this with the thread you need to make sure that the thread is super long. Make sure it's really long to be able to go through all these ruches and ruffles because when you ruche it at the end you don't want it to be to fall short and then you're, it's going to ruin the whole thing. So you need to make sure that it's, it's long enough when you're doing it that you don't have to reattach thread or rejoin thread because you need to be able to pull it closed and adjust all the ruffles properly. Um, so yeah, make sure that thread is long enough. That's that's probably the biggest thing. And make sure it's a strong enough thread as well because you don't want it snapping because then all your hard work will be undone. So make sure it's a strong thread and a long thread for this. Once you have finished your entire length and ruched and ruffled the whole length, you wanna go in and do the opposite side as well, as you can see here. Um, where I'm pointing, you want to ruche that side as well. And then once you finish that, you can get onto making the uh, neck band. So you can organize the ruffles um, a little bit, but don't knot or tie anything together just yet until you've made the neck band. So in order for me to do this, I measured the circumference of my dog's neck, which was 20 inches. So I measured a 20 inch length and 10 inch width rectangle, cut that out and folded it into thirds or fourths, I'm not sure, to create this folded effect where there's no raw hem. Um, and eventually that will lead you to have 2.5 inches width for the entire neck band. 
So then I just hemmed the two sides with two neat straight edges and once you have your neckband uh, finished you want to lay out the ruff and pull it tight to fit the length of the collar and just make sure that they're all nicely gathered and then once you have that measurement and it's all lined up correctly you can then attach and tighten the uh, string so that it doesn't unravel itself and then you can go in and start um, pinning all the individual pieces of ruffle to the neckband. Now this was kind of messy because like I said in the beginning I didn't hem this side which I wish I had done now so it is a fraying a little bit um, but yeah the idea is basically you're just sewing into each little bend or curve and just sewing that so I did that for quite a while and you have to do that on both sides um, so yeah I think that's it one tip I would say is don't over tighten the ruffles keep them a little bit looser and also when you tighten them make sure that they're not too clumped up because then you won't get that nice wave effect um, and then also when you're sewing them together um, be sure to pin the centers and the sides or, or into thirds or quarters or something so that you have an even amount of ruffles along the collar so then it will like, look really nice and even so this is how it was looking when it was all finished all super curvy and cute some people go in with a third length of string through the center of all the folds i also did that but it's not necessary it just helps it keep a little bit more sturdy um, so now i had it all finished it was time to place some fastenings for the back so i could tie it onto bugsy's fat neck um, i decided to use eyelets and just put one here on the edge and then i would hem that side in just to make it nice and neat and just put a piece of ribbon or uh, I think I used an older uh, shoelace because I thought it looked a little bit more old style so I used an old shoelace and just cut off the little plastic tip at the end and that kind of matched in a little bit more so as I was telling you before there's loads of little pencil marks on the outside of this that you can see if you look closely um, so just make sure that when you are ruching that you make sure that side is the one that's going to be covered around with the collar band and Then you don't have to mark it twice and get this mess that happened. But anyway, it's done. It looks cool It's definitely curvy and Tudor-esque. So let's get this onto Bugsy ASAP because I want to see him as a little Tudor prince <laughs> So here he is <laughs> He's ready to get his Elizabethan collar and he doesn't know what's coming to him <laughs> Hello little Bugsy, are you ready to put on your Elizabethan ruff? Huh? Huh? Are you gonna be a nice cute boy? You gonna be a cute boy for me? Yes! He's gonna be a lovely lovely princey boy. You're gonna have to clean up your face though, because it's all gross. <laughs> We're gonna do this. Okay, we can't really see it properly because he's being a slouchy boy. Are you being a slouchy boy? Yes, you are. <laughs> Should we come out on the balcony and we can see it properly? Oh, oh my god, this side profile though. <laughs> Buggy, he's so cute. You're so cute. Look at him. Oh, oh. Ooh, this, this looks cute. Okay. We're gonna try and get some photos now. Look at him! Look at the baby! Oh, so adorable! <laughs> oh, look at him go! 
Sorry, I wanted to put his old colour back on. No, 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 no. <laughs> Come here, sit, sit, sit. You're so cute. The chunk, the chunky neck, the fat chun chunky neck. <laughs> he is so sweet though. You're a little Elizabethan boy. He's a little Elizabethan boy. <laughs> The Oldie Reveal, plus Renaissance Remix. Okay, everybody, so that was my dog wearing an Elizabethan ruff. <sighs> to be honest, all the work was worth it just for that, the reveal, and <laughs> seeing him looking like that, it's all worth it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it too, and maybe if you want to make your own for your pet, for your cat, your guinea pig, who knows, maybe this um, video will help you along the process of it. So I hope you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content with Bugsy in it or just some more craft art style videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Oh my gosh, it's so hairy! Let's find your collar. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.